You're watching the morning news on Global Edmonton. Remember the days when we waited until after Christmas for that big bargain? But Black Friday and other uh, cyber issues, well, Cyber Monday, completely changed all of that. David Papp, an online security expert, joins us now with some advice on how to do your Christmas shopping safely and securely online. Good morning, David. Good morning, Mike. Nice to see you again. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. So this is, uh, it's, it's, it's a great time of the year. I mean, everybody's happy. Everybody wants to spend their money, and, and so many people are doing it online. And this is, this is why you're here, to tell us about things we should be looking out for, to be a little careful about. Oh, absolutely. Number one golden rule is if it's too good to be true, <laughs> you know, it's probably too good to be true. <laughs> like what? Give me an example of that. Um, you know, like extremely low prices on items that you wouldn't expect otherwise. But so, where are you finding those? You don't mean online. from sites that are retail establishments, though. Not well-known brick-and-mortar retail sites, you know, the ones, or even Amazon and whatnot, uh, that you would be quite comfortable with. It's the ones where, you know, if you found out about it online or, and you're not exactly sure. So the big thing is to go and look, do they have an address? Do they have a phone number? Is it a legitimate location? Can you even contact them? Because if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. But, but there are uh, websites that we don't have to be concerned about just because they don't have brick and mortar, Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. Amazon's a good example. Amazon's a great example. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next thing would be to uh, make sure that you have a secure connection. Uh, I mean, we keep telling people this, but it's making sure you got that little lock signal. You know, there's a little lock that appears on there, and we call that HTTPS. It's a secured connection. What it means is that everything between the website you're communicating with and your own web browser is encrypted. It's better for payment information, better for personal information like shipping, your address, your phone number, you know, confidential information like that. So do most, most online retailers have that, but not all. Okay. Um, your next thing would be to make sure that, uh, m this is my number one tip actually, is I like having a second credit card and I use it for online purchases. I even use it- Only? When, you got it. Even when I travel, it's got a low limit. So even if somebody took, you know, found out about it, they couldn't actually go have fun with it. And I get it. Everybody says, you know, us cardholders, we're protected, you know, and we're not responsible for fraudulent charges. But it's still a pain, right? I mean, your card is declined. You've got to wait for a new one to come in the mail. You're out, no credit card. And you've got to go and update all those automatic payments you have on your credit card, right? <laughs> so it's better to have a second one if you can and use that for online purchases. Use that while you travel. And then you've got this extra one in your back pocket. What about scams this time of the year? Are there any ones that tend to come out around the Christmas time? Now is the time of year that they do it and the reason for that is because they're time sensitive. They want you to act right now. They're saying, hey, limited time offer, it's only within the next 24 hours, you know, jump in and make this purchase. Those are the ones that you have to probably do a little bit more due diligence on. I would go and look online. I would even call them, you know, say, hey, I'm inquiring about this item. It sounds fantastic. What a great deal. And see if you get a good vibe over the phone. Sure. Something else that we talked about uh, just before we came on the air here. I saw a commercial yesterday for uh, uh, phones acting as cards now. I know Apple has yes. their Apple Pay, uh, Google and Samsung. I mean, they all have their, their different methods of doing this where you, you kind of enter your card. You take a picture of your card with your phone. Yep. That becomes your card, whether it's your debit card or your, your credit card. Danny? to uh, be leery out uh, with this? I, actually, I've got to say that when that actually finally becomes mainstream here in Canada, I think it's going to be fantastic. And the reason for that is that you're not actually sharing your card information with the person you're making a payment. It's just like PayPal as an example, right? And all these e-payment systems, Google Wallet, uh, Apple Pay, I think they're great. The reason is they submit a token information, like a payment token, to the retailer that says this person is sending you $150, but they're not actually transmitting your credit card information. So they can't actually go and make additional charges to your credit card or share it or sell it on the black market. It's just a, a payment token that they receive, and I think that's a fantastic way to go. I don't know if you knew this, Mike, but there's a prediction that in the next 10 years, we won't even have cash. They're claiming that everybody's going to be using digital cards, you know, digital payment services, e-payment services. But there's plenty of people right now who never use cash. I know. Let's, that's let's, true. let's be realistic. Yeah, they just I mean, live that way. I can't remember the last time I went to a bank, to be honest with you. Yeah. you know, so. <laughs> anyway, thanks. I wish we had some more time, Absolutely, but unfortunately Mike. we're out of time, David. You can follow David on Twitter or check out his blog. And for more tips on fraud awareness, check out his website, dealsfortech.com.